How's it going, everybody? So I went to a huge Vanguard tournament today in Alhambra, where there was a double case tournament in which 60 plus people showed up to compete and the prizing was insane. Top eight was guaranteed prizing with eighth place even being like two boxes and a half of a combination of DBT set two and festival booster. And I entered and I didn't make it to top eight, but I did go four and two, which was pretty decent. And I entered with Reziel. So I wanted to show you guys my Reziel deck and basically what I played with. So this is basically a deck profile, but also just kind of showing that this is the deck that I did okay with. And we'll talk a little bit about my matchups in the end. So stay tuned for that. But with that, let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. All right, so starting off with the ride deck, I decided to stick with Tranquila for my ride line, just because of the off chance that you do get to see Saragon, which is really nice. I did have a couple games when I didn't get off the effect and I had to pull it out of the rear guard circle, and I feel like it was okay, but not really worth it. So I feel like the Tranquila is nice when you see the dog, when you don't see the dog, it kind of sucks. So I feel like going back to Ventesta might be the plan, but for this deck profile, I did run this variant of the deck and it was okay. I don't think one's better than the other. I think if you're lucky and you do get the dog off of that, or you do get the, uh, the other grade one, Aerial Sage, I think that's still a really good target to get off with Tranquila. But obviously if you don't get it off, you, get, you still get, you know, a rear guard. So it kind of does the same thing. But with that, we're just gonna go ahead and talk about the main deck. Starting off with grade threes, three copies of Reziel's just so that we could get off our Persona ride. Reziel's got that fun little skill where you can call two things from the drop zone of different grades. And then it has the divine skill where you soul less one, return all the crits and your Vanguard gets triple drive for that turn or drive plus one. And you also get the effect where for the rest of the game, whenever you reveal a dam damage trigger, if it's any trigger unit other than a heal, you can still heal anyway. So it turns every trigger in your deck into a heal trigger on your six damage, which is really, really cool. I decided to run three Gigantic Masher. So Gigantic Masher is a card that gets an additional 15K when you call it from Reziel's skill. So it makes for a really good beater. I do think that maybe three is too much. Not that in the sense that my hand got too clogged, but I felt like that I wasn't even really calling it most of the time when I did see it. So it's still good. I did I did end up playing it for a few games, but I don't I wasn't thinking to myself, man, I'm sure I'm glad I'm running three because I wasn't seeing enough with two copies. I think two copies is enough, and I think this card is still really, really good, and I like it a lot. But I think maybe dropping it to two will be better going forward. But three, I think, has been okay. It didn't I didn't feel like it was making me break or not. And then lastly for grade threes, we're doing the bracing angel ladder, which is this really good, fun card that lets you protect your rear guards. This is good against Shernui. It's also good against Blankmire. And it lets you give you Vanguard 5K and you draw a card and it fills your soul. So I do like it for that aspect. I like that I can play in order, get a draw, you know, fill my soul. And then because I played in order this turn, I can still use Teeth Vault. So that's why I like Bracing Angel Ladder. So that's it for grade threes. I'm just gonna move these up here for now. And then we'll move on to the grade twos. Starting off for grade twos, we got the four copies of Teeth Vault, AKA the Keter Pile card. So Teeth Vault skill is when it's placed other than by a unit's ability. If you played a normal order this turn, you can soul last one. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose a card, grade less than or equal to your Vanguard and play it, and then you shuffle your deck. And it also has, if you have four or more rear uh, units in total and you attack a grade three unit, this gets 10K. So it's a 20K beater, mostly for free because you're gonna be filling your board anyways. And then because you're running an order variant of this deck, so to speak, it's really easy to fill your board the turn you ride to grade two. So continuing on, we're running three copies, Nilbaris. Nilbaris is a new card from DBTO2, so still kind of new-ish. It's only been about a month, but when it's placed by your Reziel, it gets 10K. And at the end of the battle of this attack, if you have a grade three Vanguard Reziel, you E-Blast three, put it into your soul, draw a card, look at the top card of your deck, and you could put it on the top or bottom. So it's like scry in a way. So that way you're able to kind of check your drive checks or your damage checks to kind of set you up for Reziel skill. So I do like this card at three copies. I think this card is actually good enough to be warranted at four, but obviously you want to balance with your energy blast costs. So I like three, and I also like the fact that because Reziel calls from the drop zone, if you soul blast it out, you can call it back out. So there's still some really good synergy with this card. Next for grade two is I'm running two copies of Biscotti. This is only because I don't really want to compete with Nilbaris for Counterblast, these two, or Energy, these two kind of compete with each other for that. And I just want to make it really easy. I might end up dropping a Masher 
to run another biscotti, you know, just for consistency's sake, but I still like biscotti a lot. So what it does is when it's placed on guard circle or it's discarded from your hand when you're riding from your ride deck, you can energy blast three or kind of blast one to draw a card. It also has when you place it on rear, if you persona road, you can e blast three or counter blast to look at the top three, rearrange the top of your deck so that you can pick one of the three, put it on the top of your deck and the other two go to bottom. If it's the main phase, you call the card instead of putting it at the top. So it's good for building board and it's good for when you call it from drop to look at triggers. So this card's really good as a finisher. I like it a lot. I'm only running two copies, but obviously because Rezio can call from the drop zone, it ends up working out when you see at least one in the drop. Then I'm running two copies of Cadwalla. I still really, really like this card a lot. Cadwalla at the end of the battle, the Detective Vanguard. If you have four or more units, Soul Blast, retire this unit. Look at top three, add a great two or greater card. If you didn't add a card, you can just shuffle and draw a card afterwards. So what I like about this card is similar to Nibblerus, where you kind of recycle itself in the drop zone. You can use it, kill it, call it back with a Reziol, do it again if you have enough soul, which is nice. But it's also still a really good target when you do your early grade two game with the prey, with the wisdom of beginning order. So you can play it as a card and then you can soul blast it, do your stuff. I also really like Cadwalla just because if you're playing against Varga or Blagmire, it's a rear guard that retires itself, meaning you don't have to worry about losing it due to retiring or binding effects. And then lastly for grade twos, the wisdom of beginning that cleared the world, which is part of the Keter pile. So what it does is you play it for kind of last one, you draw two cards, call two cards from your hand. If you didn't call them, you have to discard. So basically it's to help you fuel your hand and build a board. And obviously this combos really well with T-Fault because T-Fault is when it's placed by a unit ability, so orders don't count. So you can use this to play T-Fault and since you played an order that turn, you can build a board. So the deck is pretty self-explanatory for the most part in how it works. The whole goal is to get this in your opening hand and get teeth fault or draw into it somehow, build a board huge while you're on grade two and then full swing and just kind of keep the momentum going that way. This card is really, really helpful because even late game after you ride the Rezil, it's still a good card for building board and you have consistent access to counter charge. So there's not much issue with abusing your counter blast, but that's it for grade twos. We're just gonna go ahead and move these to the side and then we'll just go ahead and move on to grade ones. So starting off with grade ones, we're going into the boy, four copies of Sergion. So this is the card that was choice restricted with Luard, so you can't play it in Luard, but you can still play it in real. It's really good. At the end of the battle, it is boost. If you have more rear guards than your opponent, or you played in order this turn, it gets 5k, and at the end of the battle, you retire it to look at the top two cards of your deck. One goes to hand, the other goes to bottom. So because we're playing an order-focused deck, we could take advantage of the fact that even if we don't have more rear guards than our opponent, we can still use the card effect. And because Rezio calls cards from the drop zone, this is a card that you're constantly recycling and bringing back onto your board. So next up for grade ones, we do run four copies of Ariel Sh Sage. Sage. Ariel Sage is when it boosts, if you have a Vanguard Rezio, it gets 5k, so 13k booster. And when it boosts your Vanguard, you can discard a card to counter charge and it gets an extra 2k, making it a 15k booster for your Vanguard. And the counter charge does help because you can do this, boost, counter charge, and then do Reziel skill. So you don't have to really worry about it if you have counter blast because Ariel Sage will make sure you have it. So we definitely want to run for that and it still makes a really good booster no matter where it is, but you definitely want it behind your Vanguard, which is where your ride deck kind of helps you hopefully find it. Lastly for grade ones, we're doing four perfect guards and one Elementaria. Pretty standard, four standard. Elementaria is good in every deck for the most part, unless you run grade fours in your main deck. So just keep that in mind. But that's pretty much it for like what the main deck or normal units look like. So we're gonna jump into triggers. For crits, we're starting off with Blade, Feather, Dragon, and then we run our four Chivalmia. Chivalmia, yeah. So it's just our vanilla crit. I'm using the one that came in Festival Booster that does not have the Trial Decks text on it. And then we got our Blade Feather, which is a crit with the skill. At the end of the battle, it boosts. It goes to soul, you get something 2k. So it can potentially help fill your soul. So I like throwing it in there as a just in case. And then we run front triggers because this deck does not have any issue whatsoever with drawing cards. If anything, we constantly have a board and we're constantly having a field. So getting a front trigger is really nice because your front row getting all that power is gonna make a huge difference. So I definitely like the fronts over the draws in Reziel. I'm sure most people will agree with me on that. Then we got our four vanilla heal triggers. I feel like 
vanilla heels are back in style again. No one's really kind of worried about restanding units. Uh, you might want to run the heel where it gets an extra 15 if your opponent has a rear guard that restands itself. Maybe just because of Boing Meyer and Shiranui, but I feel like a lot of decks are either calling new units out, so it's not really warranted. So I think the vanillas are just fine now. And last but not least, our over trigger, which is Volnut. So Volnut is when you check it for drive check, you pick a rear guard, you give it the effect where after it attacks, it restands itself. But if you don't have a stood unit, you can then draw a card and then call a card to rear guard circle instead. Afterwards, you can apply the 100 mil. So whatever unit you're restanding or calling from hand is probably gonna be getting the power anyways. But I like Volnut because you call new cards when you attack a Reziel, you drive check it, Whatever new card you called, you just give it 100 mil and restand so it swings twice with this big boy power. But that is it for the Reziel deck. So that's pretty much what I entered with. So in terms of how my rounds went, just real quick for anyone that's interested. Round one, I played against Leandorn and the deck was a little scary because it played the mask version. So they got the persona right off because they went second, but we ended up making a decent comeback. Round two, I played the Reziel mirror match, which was not so fun because my opponent got their order and I didn't. So they were way ahead of me in terms of gameplay anyways. So they just ended up getting the win. It was a pretty fair, fair round. Round three, I played against Varga. Varga is a really, really strong deck. And basically what I did was I was lucky enough to heal when I was at four and I went back down to three damage before my opponent used their divine skill. And I forced myself to stay at three damage by guarding all their attacks, preventing them from being able to use divine skill. And I just came back and, you know, tried to do my thing before they could even get their divine skill off. So I kind of shut down Varga a little bit, but I was lucky enough to get a heal to allow me to do that. So I'll take that win. Round four, I played against Blagmeyer. That was a really, really long game. It basically ended with the Blagmeyer player decking out because we just kept on going back and forth, back and forth for so long. And I, it's just the sheer amount of cards that I was able to draw thanks to Nilboris and Cadwalla and Wisdom. I was able to get a bunch of hand to be able to survive all those attacks. I was also consistently able to get a Persona Ride to keep up the pressure. So that was a really, really close game, but ended up getting it just due to my opponent having to deck out. Then round five against... Leanne Orn again, that game was kind of a very simple, like I'm just gonna play my order and make a bunch of rear guards and have them swing for really big numbers. And it was just a little overwhelming, but overall it was a pretty fair game. It basically ended on like my persona ride turn. And then round six was wild. I rode to grade one going first, my opponent rides to grade one going second, and then they're able to, they're playing Zorga by the way, they're able to get two roaming prison dragons into their drop zone, and then they played Habitat as their order to call another rear guard, and then they called both roaming prison dragons with a crit, and I had to take at least two attacks, so I took one of the rear guard roaming prisons at attack, took two damage, no damage triggers, Vanguard attacks. I'm like, okay, I can take this one and block the other roaming with a crit, as long as he doesn't get a crit, and as long as I get a damage trigger. My opponent crits, I don't get a damage trigger, so now I'm at four damage with no damage triggers, and my opponent is swinging for like 28k for the third attack, and I have to use three cards in my hand to guard, because again, I just, just went first. And then now it's my turn, I'm about to ride to grade two, and I've got like two cards in my hand. Basically, my opponent completely overpowered me the next turn when they rode to grade two, because I had no cards in my hand and I didn't use to ride to grade three that game. So that was just basically my opponent high rolled, but that was a crazy game. Shout out to Ken. That was an insane like way to just obliterate someone. Props to you, man. That was, that was a crazy game. So all in all, I went four and two, lost against Zorga and Reziel. And I think overall this deck is really good. I think this is a really good top contender deck and I'm looking forward to playing more games with it. I don't see it changing too much. Obviously set three is gonna be nothing Reziel related. So the deck's gonna stay as is for the foreseeable future unless we get like some set four Reziel support, which I don't think we will. But yeah, if you're interested in playing a Reziel deck, this is basically the list I recommend. Maybe drop a masher for another Biscotti. There you are. So that might be the only thing I'd recommend just to make it a little more consistent, but this is what I ended up playing with today for the 69 person tournament. It was 69 people, by the way. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.